You're listening to LVB Podcast Show with your friend, advocate, and host, Alvaro. Hi, and welcome to LVB Show. My name is Alvaro, and I'm very happy to be with you tonight. Before I introduce our guest, I want to say thank you so much to people listening from the United States, from Canada, from Australia, from Europe, from Africa, from Asia. We have listeners all across Latin America as well. Thank you for following the show. It's been a long time doing this show for many, many years. Oh and I really appreciate the loyalty of everybody. Now, remember that you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can also share the um, channel with everybody that you know. Now, tonight we will talk with Yuma. He works with an Australian company that develops hardware and software that is accessible for us. And we're going to talk about products that are very important for us. So, thank you so much, Yuma, for being with us tonight. Thank you very much for inviting me. Yuma, can you tell us a little bit about your company? So, Osiris started about three years ago um, from multiple conversations between myself and my co-founder, who is cited, Jake. Uh, we were both going to uni and we both, you know, spent a lot of time uh, at the local gas station with other friends drinking coffee and and talking about technology, mathematics, AI, the future society and our planet. And, um, you know, from conversation to more kind of exchanging ideas and exchanging files and small projects we were doing, uh, we ended up working uh together since then uh, after being accepted in a local accelerator program. So that's when Osiris started in 2017. And what are some of your products? Uh, because the, our philosophy is really spatial awareness and um, most of the things that I work on because I'm blind, I want to be able to perceive the things around me, whether it's in the immediate space or a bit further away or even very far away like space. So uh, we have a, a span of different products uh, and projects going on from a digital uh, IoT based tape measure uh, to a 3D audio uh, engine uh, that you can put on a surround system and, you know, play and do things around with it. Uh, a system where you can understand uh, a volumetric space and manipulate 3D objects and give information about those 3D objects. And we also have an augmented reality um, space app that is accessible to the blind, but also beautiful to the sighted. Can you tell us the name of the app? The app is called Astrios. Uh, that is the, the, the space star gazing app I can send you a test flight link uh, if you want uh, and the uh, IOT tape measure measuring device is called the macaron we're gonna talk about the macaron and for our listeners and maybe I'm gonna surprise you a little bit here <laughs> I do have your app my friend but I wanted you to tell us the name of the app Okay. <laughs> it's a little bit hard to pronounce for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I I have done a little bit of testing for 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 the app actually in yeah. the last few months. So um, I have to say that this company is doing a lot of good for everybody. So um, I I want to go into something that sometimes people don't know about, and is this universal access what is this tell tell our listeners so the concept of universal ac uh, access maybe to make it put it in the context uh where everyone can sort of understand if you put a drummer and a bass guitarist in the same room and you make them go for a live session 
And then afterwards, you change the instruments. That means the bassist goes to the drums and the drummer goes to the bass and let them play again. Once they finish, they will find out that there's some form, there's some intuition that they never would have thought they would have and hearing the intuition of the other coming in from the outside. So universal access in that respect is something which is accessible to everybody, but it's not pointed as just being an accessibility product. Everyone can use it, and the accessibility is something which is there by default. That is very important, Yuma, for our mm. listeners. We need a fully accessible planet in all senses of the world. So I agree that's, with that's you. That's right. That's right. And, and Yuma, talking about the Macron, can you tell us how how is it, how can you describe it for us and, and how does it work for us? So the Macron, uh, you can hold it in your hand. So you know, boys and girls can, can hold it in their hands. It's small enough for that. And it's a, um, it has a measure that rolls out as a tape, but it also has a touch screen and some vibration motors so that you can use uh, a measuring tool and get feedback in three dimensions. So you can get the feedback, you know, through the vibration, through sound, and it's connected via IoT to an iOS app. And that means that you can save all your measurements or you can load what we call uh, templates. And those are sequences or pre-made sequences uh, of measurements for different objects. So uh, it can be a body. And then when you measure your body, you can then understand whether You have three different styles of bodies. You can be endomorph, mesomorph, or ectomorph. And each of these different types of bodies will tell you what your normal um, food intake should be, what kind of sports you would be best at, what kind of conditions you may have later down in life. Uh, and that's just one of the templates. You can have many, many more templates, and it can be expanded uh, also to other objects like furniture, uh, your dog uh, it could be inside a space. Uh, for renovating house, uh, it could be for fashion. Um, there's a whole range of different things where you can use it for. But the hardware itself uh, is a very small, slick device um, with a tape head, magnetic tape head that flips out, and you can do linear, curved, and angle measurements uh, with the same device. Uh, we're also looking at the possibility of using the same device and upgrading the software to create more um, enhanced measuring modes. Now, let me see if I understand correctly. You have an actual tape and in, in, in it is connected to a smartphone application. Yes, so there's a, there's a spindle which uh, we Uh, has a digital reading uh, mechanism inside uh, that allows you to roll the tape out uh, with a hook at the end or bring it around and then, you know, uh, with a magnetic clasp so that you have the exact measurement uh, to a certain distance. And all of that, the information and the data gets collected on your app so you can save your measurements over time as well as static. Yuma, when you do a measurement, then what happens is you open the app and you see what was the result of the measurement? So there are two, there are many different ways you can save the measurement. If your phone is not close by, the device will save it internally. And as soon as it gets connected and you open the app, uh, the measurements will be saved in. And there's a system where you can create folders and each folder is going to be a set of measurements that uh, you decide to put in that, inside that folder. Wow, that sounds great. Now, the one million dollar question. <laughs> What's the price range of this device for our listeners that are very exciting right now? 
So uh, we're currently working on four different types uh, of macarons. So uh, you will have the macaron basic, uh, which will not have the LED. Um, a lot of things will be stripped away. Uh, we're looking uh, between 60 and 80 US dollars. Then you got the uh, macaron grade, which is a higher end version, uh, higher quality materials uh, and more components inside which will go uh, between 150 and 180 US dollars. And then two other ones, they're more a bit into the future where we will have seven to eight meter long tape measures. And those ones, you know, with uh, more like stainless steel casing and things, but we haven't figured the price yet at this point. Wow, that is very exciting. Now, when can people buy it and where? Um, they can uh, already buy it now uh, by going to our website uh, at www.oseyeris.com and they can get in touch with us and we can send them a link uh, where they can purchase it. And um, we're currently getting all the components in uh, from China and also from uh, locally and we'll be ready to send units out towards the end of this month. That is very impressive, Yuma. It's, and I have talked to many friends and they say, we knew about Braille mm. kind of tape um, measurements, but not digital. This has to be, if not the first one that is accessible for us, one of the first in the world, right? Uh, it seems like uh, it seems like it's the case, but mainly for the connectivity and the control that you can have with the app. Because one of the benefits of the macaron is that we can constantly update it. So if we have some new features that we want to put, so for instance, uh, the latest thing that we did is that if you lose your macaron, you just have to open the app. And the macaron will start, you know, uh, beeping so that you know where you actually put it down. Uh, because we had a, uh, an instance where um, at the wood workshop, someone actually lost the macaron. And so that prompted us to, uh, to actually create that feature. And we can do many more features at time, as time goes. So when you buy a macaron, you don't just buy that macaron and then you have to buy a new version the next year. You bought the macaron, and every time there's a new upgrade or something new, we just have to upload it. And when you open your app, it will download it to your device, and you get the new feature for free. So it's more about the expandability uh, than being, uh, you know, the first ever accessible uh, tape measure. Oh, very, very well said, Yuma. Yeah. Very powerful device, I have to say. Great for Christmas also. <laughs> that probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so Yuma, something comes to mind. I know it doesn't have anything to do precisely with this device, but mm -hmm. you're a tech guy. You will understand what I'm trying to go for. And is okay, GPS, okay? Um, yeah. What is your opinion? And, and, and I want to talk about this because sometimes people ask me okay where are we going with indoor navigation with um, outdoor navigation with not being very precise people complain all the time Yuma you're mm. on the street you go to McDonald's and the GPS says you are 20 feet and away from from McDonald's, but you are a hundred feet away in reality. Mm. Um, will someday be a hundred percent accurate? One kind of a system, like maybe Garmin or I don't know any kind of device, or do you think always we're gonna be needing assistance to say I'm kind of close to the place, but I'm not sure where it is. <laughs> Well, uh, the thing is, again, it's, it's about the, uh, the different distances related to different technologies. So GPS gives us kind of a general overview of where we are because 
what it does, it takes triangulation from different cell towers and satellites, but not everywhere has a specific cell tower available to better triangulate your position. Uh, there's some technologies out there that will allow you one centimeter error margin, but you need a base station that will give you the information. So let's say uh, this one GPS module we've been trying internally is, so you have a base station that you could put somewhere, let's say on a building, and that will orient down on the street, and you will have the chip uh, that is a, a receptor, and uh, that will transmit as well, receptor transmitter, and it will transmit to your app, let's say, your exact location. But when it comes to better you know accuracy for understanding the position of objects around you it's probably more augmented reality but you don't want to take your mobile phone and move around in the street and have your phone always in front of you right. what we need is just a camera that we can put on the shoulder on top of the backpack that will transmit the information and at that point you will bit get you'll get better accuracy for the objects around you and if you add a couple more sensors, then you can further kind of confirm what object it is and maybe give you some more sensors, you know, like the vibration uh, to tell you that an object is within a certain threshold, like two meters close to you. So it will start to vibrate. So, you know, to be careful or slow down. So it's really a mix of technologies, not just GPS itself. And we are close to having that kind of technology together and people saying, okay, I'm going to the gym and it's going to get an accuracy of one meter? Uh, so that is getting close, very close, yeah. We're really at the cusp of something like that. It's just that um, there's, a, I think there's a couple of projects. Uh, one project from Microsoft, I think it's called um, Immerse. Immerse, um, Immerse View or something like that, uh, which uses AI uh, to give you the directions, you know, um, and the contextual information of things around. I'm not sure exactly what technology they're using, uh, but there's a lot of teams in the world which are working on, you know, those kind of solutions. So navigation, uh, but they still have not... Um, beaten let's say the two classic ways of navigating which are the white cane and the guide dog <laughs> yeah that's a that's a tough one <laughs> um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now i i have to ask about the eye beacons or the beacons in general mm -hmm. and, and my question to you juma is i have done interviews about the beacons i have done interviews about people that are making hotels accessible airports yeah. accessible, places accessible. Just today, I found another company that is doing that, and they have around, I, I believe it's more than a hundred places where they have put beacons and they have an app for that. Do you see a future of that? And, and my question goes, because I believe beacons are not very cheap or if they were, everybody would have one in their store. Or am I missing something, Juma? Or is this going to be worldwide in a year? Uh, I will give you my personal opinion about this. Um, I personally think that iBeacons are not scalable. Mm -hmm. uh, because, okay, there's one problem. Uh, like you said, you were talking about McDonald's or maybe a different shop. Those systems are made so that you can consume efficiently. So you can efficiently go to McDonald's and consume. So you can efficiently go to a clothing store and consume. Um, I think we need to have a navigation system that allows us to produce efficiently. Um, and what I mean, what I mean in, in terms of that is that when we have systems, let's say in our, you know, there should be kind of a process between let's say a functional, a person who's visually impaired, but who's going to work in an, uh, an organization to send a request for a beacon setup. And then that beacon setup would be customized for that specific person in the office place. But the beacon technology, you cannot put it in a park. Uh, 
uh, you cannot put it in every park uh, or you know every place where maybe you want to go and get some breathing oxygen, go to the ocean, go in the forest and things like that, which is really one of the one very big important aspect of life that we as blind people are not exploiting enough. And so for that, I don't think the beacons are very adapted. And plus, like you say it, they're expensive. They can definitely become cheaper. Uh, but for you to maintain a big armada of beacons across the city and things, uh, because some of them will break, uh, you have to create an, a network to make sure to maintain that, you know, uh, to make sure that they're all working to see where they're not working anymore and then to readapt send some teams. So in terms of logistics, um, the beacon is not scalable. It's going to be very expensive over time. I think better technology, and that's again, my personal opinion is a very portable camera, uh, which can send information to your app. And then because we all already have smartphones, we just need to download new apps that gives us the capability to do new things just with the camera. That sounds very interesting. And I I leave this interview very excited, Yuma, because this is one of the things that we are missing still to have this planet more accessible for everybody. So mm. it's, it's one of the things that we need to have in order to be even more independent. I would like, um, before you give us your your company's contact information so people can reach out for you and, and buy these products and get in touch with you, I would mm -hmm. like your opinion. How do you see technology going for us? And do you think there's something that maybe technology experts are missing that you say, oh my God, so many people devoting their time and effort and money to this, but they are not seeing this other part. What, what do you think about that? Um, well, there are four main obstacles to people with a visual impairment. Uh, one, navigation. Uh, two, education. Three, entertainment. And four, work. Um, all of us, like around the world, like different teams, we're all working to solve, you know, one of these problems. But I think because all of this is still very niche, it's difficult to for that to cross over to the sighted population. And then sometimes a company which has the best interest, uh, you know, the best social interest for people who are visually impaired would uh, employ someone who is sighted to find a solution or just consult with someone vision, uh, with a vision impairment uh, to make something accessible. And then when it comes to accessibility between the degrees of vision that we have or, or vision loss that we have and the different um, personalities that we have, we might think of accessibility in a different way. So um, I think what will happen is that this, there's going to be a continuous effort from everyone to make things accessible. But the problem is that this saturation of new ways and ideas is going to make us tired because we have to learn always new things. And then someone else will come with a new, you know, machine or something, but then they will use their own method of control or of how to do this and that to make things accessible. So I think for any team out there which is working on accessibility, I think you should look at really how the main most successful accessibility tools that we have right now, like the smartphone, you know, like, uh, you know, the, the, the screen readers, we should think to make our controls that way. And one more thing. Uh, this is something we're really focusing on in our team right now is uh, natural dialogue control. So you want to be able to just speak to your phone that will bring up the information that you want or tell you where there's something or, you know, something like that. Because one big thing we want is hands free. 
we want to be hands free and that is equals to freedom but all of this said i'm very excited about what's going to happen in the future for us and you know we never know maybe elon musk is going to uh you know i'm going to knock at his door uh because i won the uh holman prize from the lighthouse on the blind in san francisco and i'm going to go across the world to meet different scientists and when i go to the us i might knock at the door of elon musk and say hey there's you know 50 million people 280 million people out there who can't see but who are very smart intelligent capable how about we just find one global solution for everybody hopefully that could work <laughs> well i have to say congratulations on on the prize in 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 you know i i have a question and is a global solution mm. like what? what 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 would what would you think um well fundamentally what is the problem that we all have uh is that the sensor in, sensory input which is the visual part is malfunctioning or is limited or it does not exist simply and that is the fundamental problem mm. and then from there trickles down the issue of being able to walk accessibility to educate ourselves to entertain ourselves and to work so let's say we put all of the resources to make so many different things accessible but then what if you aggregate all these resources into one global solution is so that we can all see again a bit like the cochlear implant then at that point not only can we put a lot of the resources that we put into making things accessible somewhere else to innovate elsewhere but we all have the added joy of being able to see again or to see for the first time and i think that's also something that is getting a bit obfuscated by all the rest of the activity and that we should maybe look back into finding that global solution and that the actors and influencers who have visual impairments call upon those who are high earners and who also have some affinity to visual impairment to say hey if you guys with the really talented scientists that we have across the world if you guys put a, a fund together mm -hmm. to make visual impairment you know something of the past mm -hmm. for every visual impairment mm -hmm. then that's it we found the solution yeah wow that's that's so powerful i i i should have here a a big drink to toast for that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah because, me too because, i'll have a coffee <laughs> yeah but 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 juma tell us more about it when are you going to meet this powerful scientist uh well the um, holman project starts officially next week uh through a podcast called Astro Hunters oh. and I'm going to be going across Australia to meet different scientists uh in astrophysics then um I'm going to come back to Brisbane for the holiday season and then I'm going to go back out but this time in Africa and the Middle East so South Africa uh Mali Egypt Israel Iraq Uh, and then come back and go again through Europe, US and Canada and that's from February to June next year. And I'll be meeting people from NASA, uh from the NASA Goddard Center, I'll be at different universities, uh Caltech and everything and when I get the opportunity in California, I will knock at the door of Jeff Bezos and uh Elon Musk. So Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, if you hear me, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming <laughs> wow i i i didn't know we would end up talking about this subject it's is the first time and and i have done this show yuma since 2011 <laughs> and oh, right. the first time i i hear something as ambitious as this i think it's wonderful what you're saying mm. and what you're going for because i think you're absolutely right and i would go Uh, I want to say further because it's, it's, it's a different part of, of of things, but 
I, I'm going to give you an example for our listeners. Um, when I discovered that you were able to scan documents with an application, I was so excited. Then it came the price and it was super expensive. Mm. But then six months later, a year later, there was another app to do that, less expensive and less expensive. And now we have free apps that do that. Mm-hmm. Now, if everybody wanting to solve a problem, joining forces, would develop something unique in yes. global, then everything would work easier and faster for everybody. Well, that's exactly. And maybe we can take the example of the complex situations we have as visually impaired people to try and find solutions to the, again, the basic problem of electric plugs. Why do we have to have so many different types of plugs when you go to Japan or the US or (laughs) Europe or Australia or New Zealand? Why don't we just all use the same format? (laughs) <laughs> and, 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 and that will save us so much money and complication and so many things. I am sure we can get to something like that at some point. Uh, but the same thing again with, you know, it's the message that is really important. And I hope that the outreach uh, with the Holman Prize is going to give a bit of that message. I'm not saying it what I'm doing is going to be the alpha and omega, mm-hmm. but like myself, others across the world are doing the same thing to pass the message that yes, we are smart, intelligent, capable, and you know, we have a lot of things that we can do. All you guys have to do is just find that one solution. So let's call on those who have the resources to help do that. And Juma, let me ask you a follow-up on that regard, Denise. Could that mean that maybe governments would take action as well? Uh, I believe um, governments have the capacity and, you know, the um, the influence uh, and the resources to, to make that happen. Um, I don't know how many people who are in politics across the world actually have a visual impairment or are blind. Uh, but this would be a call, to, you know, for, for them to really get together and, you know, and to put forth that message. Um, yeah. And Yuma, if you need signatures from a lot of people in our community worldwide, that would be something also to start thinking about to be able to say to these scientists, look, this is how many people are thinking this is important for our Mm. society. And this may include those politicians you're talking about. For instance, I know there is a former San Francisco mayor that is blind by RP, Mm. the same disease that I have. Mm -hmm. Um, There is someone else in the U.S. important that is also visually impaired in the politic field. I can't remember who. Uh, um, And and we could find, I'm sure, more people than we believe. Yeah. Well, if if you know the name of that person, I'm going to go and knock at his door (laughs) when I go to the U.S. (laughs) I'm going to do the research and and, and send you a message with that. Count on it. (laughs) Mm. Well, Yuma, um, it's been a an absolute privilege to have you on because this is so incredibly excited. I mean, I'm talking about the company, the products, your passion for doing something really important in this planet for everybody. So I'm, I'm super excited. But before I let you go, please tell us how can people reach out for you? Yeah, um, yeah, it, it's it's been a, a real pleasure to talk to you as well. Um, uh, you know, love to have a discussion, you know, uh, off record uh, and stuff yep. and yeah yep. uh, but so yeah uh, our website is www.osiris.com but it's spelled o-s-e-y-e-r-i-s dot com and you can see a lot of the blogs and you know what we do and the products you can subscribe to the mailing list or you can go to our Facebook page which is Osiris uh, VIP or you can check out um, 
our Astrios page, uh, which is the space app, which is Astrios, so A-S-T-R-E-O-S dot space. And you can subscribe and we will send you a test flight and you can play around with the app and you can give us recommendations and everything. Well, I have to say thank you also to Catherine, who may hopefully listen to this show in due time, and she's been a great person to be in touch with, I have to say, for our listeners. You have great people in your company, Juma. Yeah, and, shout out to Catherine. <laughs> and, and so, for our listeners, that's it for tonight. I know it's been a very powerful and enlightening talk with Yuma, and we for sure are going to keep in touch. With, I'm, I'm so excited. Um, and so, If you want to be on the show, remember, you can email me at lowvisionbureau at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter at lowvisionbureau. And, of course, subscribe and share this interview with your friends and family because this is important. This is about global accessibility, universal access for all. Thank you again, Juma. Have a wonderful night there. Thanks. You too. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.